Shalom, everyone. Tonight's message is uh, a message that's in actually in Exodus chapter three, and I'll, I'll bring you the, the my key message or key verse tonight is three fourteen Exodus three fourteen. But I'll bring you up to speed of you know kind of tell you the what's you know what leads up to three fourteen. So you know that Moses was in Egypt. He was a baby born in Egypt. His, uh, well, Pharaoh sent out the uh, word that all the male Hebrew children were to be killed, and so, or the, the male, yeah, male children. And so instead of his mother killing him, she put him in a wicker basket, put him in the river. Pharaoh's daughter found him, asked Moses' mother to, to raise him, not knowing that it was Moses' uh, real mother. And uh, so anyway, asked her to raise him because she was a slave in Pharaoh's house. And so she uh, she did, she raised Moses, and Moses was raised in Pharaoh's house, and he was raised basically as one of Pharaoh's children. And so when, when Moses got older, he knew that he was a Hebrew, and one day he happened to be looking out, and he saw where uh, one of Pharaoh's uh, Egyptian you know, army guys was beating a uh, an Egyptian, I'm sorry, a, uh, a Hebrew. <clears throat> and uh, Moses went out and fought the Egyptian and killed him. Well, he didn't, at the time, he didn't realize that somebody had seen him, but they did. And whenever uh, the next day, Moses said something to one of the guys, and the guy made comment back to him that I saw what you did. You killed, you know, one of the Egyptians. Well, Moses was afraid that he was going to get caught, and he fled. And when he fled, he went to the land of Midian. And while he was in Midian, he ran into a guy named Jethro, and Jethro was a, a priest, I think, there in Midian. And uh, anyway, Moses started working for him. And whenever uh, the guy, when Jethro realized that Moses was a, a pretty strong character, good guy or whatever, he took a liking to him and he gave Moses one of his daughters. He gave him uh, his daughter named Zipporah. Well, Moses married Zipporah. They had a child. And then one day Moses was out shepherding for Jethro, shepherding his sheep. And he was on Mount Sinai or actually, uh, Mount Horeb on the, in the Sinai area and around uh, in, in uh, Arabia. And so uh, Moses was up on this mountain, Horeb, and he noticed a bush that was burning and the bush wasn't being consumed. And he walked over to the bush in curiosity, trying to figure out what was going on. And he heard a voice come out of the, the burning bush. It says, take off your shoes for this is Kadosh or holy ground. And so Moses did. And he went over and the bush started speaking to him. And out of the burning bush, he was told that it was, he was Elohim. He was Yahuwah. And so uh, he was told to go back to Egypt and bring the, the, Egypt, or the, the Hebrew people out of Egypt, out of bondage. And he he know he knew that at the time that there was many many Egyptian gods, and so he asked Yahuwah. He said, "Well, when I get over there, and they ask me who what God told me to come get y'all, he he said, well, who sh what should I tell them?" And he said, "In this, so uh, let's start in verse thirteen. and." Uh, here in verse 13, it says, and Moses spoke to Elohim, uh, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the Elohim of your fathers has sent me to you. And they asked me, what is his name? What should I tell them? And Elohim said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Okay. Now here's something that, you know, whenever you look in the, in the English, and we read it in English, it, you know, the, the I am who I am. Well, that doesn't carry the meaning of what's actually supposed to be mean, what it's supposed to mean in the Hebrew. And, and, and so understanding what it means in the Hebrew is, is what it actually is. Okay, so you see I am who I am in verse 14. Okay, so let's go to the interlinear right quick. Let me show you this. Okay, we want to go to 3, 14. Okay. Now, 
here in the Hebrew, you see the I am who I am. Now you remember, remember from in Hebrew, you read from right to left. So it's basically the way it says is and said Yahuwah to Moses. I am who I am. Now this I am who I am. It's a Yah, a share, a Yah. Okay, now a Yah, a share, a Yah. If you go to the 1961 right here and click on 1961, that'll take you to basically what you need to know about what that word means. Okay, it's a Yah, it's it's hey, yod, hey, ha Yah. Okay. And it's this is basically how it's it's phonetically sounds. It's uh hey ya. And it means the short definition is to fall or to fall out, come to pass, become or be. Now, if you look in the throughout scripture, okay, let's go right here just a second. Let me show you this. Okay, the word ayah is in the Hebrew scripture 3,561 times. Okay, now with it being in there for 3,561 times, these are the ways that it's actually used. So it could be administered to act, allotted, am, appeared, apply, became, became his and lived, <clears throat> become, then, I mean, if you just go down, it, it's exist, extend, extended, fallen, feared. It could mean many, many things. Made, lasted, last, you know, so the, it, it, it's, it's, there's a lot of different meanings that the word ayah can actually carry. Okay, so the depth of what it literally means is not conveyed even close in the English. And it, 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 it says, I am who I am. Now, to kind of put it in, in the perspective in English, where, uh, you know, where, where we can see it or where it's, where, where this is the same wording is used in English. If, if you go to uh, uh, the book of Revelation, let's, okay, well now we're in Revelation chapter one and look at verse eight. It says, I am the alpha and the omega, says Yahuwah Elohim, who is and who was and who is to come, the almighty or the El Shaddai. Now we know that it's, the Alpha and the Omega is Greek. Well, he didn't speak Greek, he spoke Hebrew. And in this, in, in a, a Jew, a Hebrew, would see this and know that this is a Hebrew idiom type thing. Okay, so I am the Aleph and the Tav, okay? And it, which basically means the beginning and the end, because the Aleph is the, the, uh, uh, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the Tav is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So they would know that it encompasses everything, the, the, the beginning to the end. And then, uh, then it goes on to say, and Yahuwah Elohim uh, says Yahuwah Elohim, who is, or the, the, what, the way it should be is who, who is, who always was, and who always is to come. Okay, so the, the meaning of it, the when a Hebrew reads the ayah, asher, ayah, they already know, they've been taught that that literally is talking about the, you know, the one true Elohim, Yahuwah, and it, it's literally talking about uh, what they would understand it to be talking about would be he was always in existence. He is now, and he always will be in existence. So the, uh, you know, the, again, the Hebrew understanding of this is without borders. In other words, it is unlimited. His name is unlimited. It's Ein Sof is the Hebrew word. So uh, when, a, when a Jew or, a, uh, you know, a Yahudim, when they would read this, they know what it means. Where when we read it, in English, it doesn't carry anywhere near the depth or the meaning of what's actually written in the scripture. Now, I'm going to, that's kind of the end of that little study, I guess, but I do want to bring one thing up. So if you, if you go back to, uh, let me go back here, let me show you this right quick. Okay, so if you go back to Exodus at the burning bush, and it says that the bush 
was ablaze. Okay, if you go back into the Hebrew, let's look at that a minute. Let's go to 3-1 in the interlinear. Let's see. Well, wait a minute, it must not have been 3-1. Let's let me look at that again. Okay, no, it's three. It's gonna be three, two. Okay, so again, let's go back to the interlinear. And let's go to three, two. <laughs> uh, wrong way. Three, two. Okay, now maybe I got it now. Okay. Uh, okay, so when you see uh, the word fire right here. Okay, the word fire is Aish. Okay, now also if you if you look then uh, there's another version of the word fire. Let's go back, let's go to, uh, I think it's the 314. It's where it is. So there's many, there's many versions or kind of kind of different meanings of the word uh, fire. Let's back up. Let's see if I can find it. Well, sorry about that. I'll find it in just a second. If you'll bear with me, I kind of got, let's see, Genesis three, okay. Uh, it's not Genesis, it's Exodus, isn't it? I'm sorry, I'll get it in a minute. Okay. Let's see here. Let's see. Okay, and there was an angel of Yahuwah appeared to him in a blazing fire. Okay, let's look at that. Let's. This is in. Uh, well, that's in three two. Let's look at that. I may not be able to find what I'm looking for here, but I'll I'll, I'll explain it in a minute if I can't find it. Okay, the word fire, let me just do this. The word fire in Hebrew is, uh, or uh, the word not fire, fire is I burnt, I guess is, is what I was actually uh, actually looking for. But uh, the, the word burnt here in, 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 the, in the Hebrew is literally uh, in, the Hebrew, in the Hebrew, what it, it is is uh, Ola. Now there's a term called korban olah. The korban olah is the is a burnt offering. Now something that's kind of well, it's kind of I guess it's one of those aha kind of things, or you know, you go wow, I, that that's kind of it's cool the way you puts things together, even though you know it's a lot of things is rough to read, hard to read, and this is be one of them. But the korban olah is is the burnt offering. Now, a burnt offering 
we know is, uh, you know, it's it's a sin offering, or it, you know, it it could be considered a tithe. Now, uh, when when you see the word korban olah, if you translate korban olah into Greek, and it comes out the word holocaust, and the word olah cost that's that's Greek that's translated from the Hebrew. Now, you, in, during the Holocaust, there were uh, roughly 7 million Jews that were killed. Now, there were more people killed in the Holocaust, but a lot of them were Jehovah's Witness, and a lot of them were homosexual, and a lot of them were different, you know, different uh, outlaw type people or whatever, I guess. But, uh, but as far as the Jews, there was roughly 7 million. Well, it's kind of strange, but there was between 70 and 80 million total people killed in World War II. So if you do the numbers, it's a 10% or, or roughly 10% of the, uh, the people killed in World War II were killed in what's called, or the he in the Hebrew would be in the burnt offering. So it's, a, it's, it, it's just uh, to me, I don't know. It, it, Maybe I'm seeing something that that's not necessarily there, but I think there's something to it. With 70 to 80 million people dying in World War II, the seven million that were of the Jews that were exterminated, that were killed in the gas chambers and burnt to you know burnt to ash, then that that rough that was roughly it's it's roughly 10 percent of the number of people that was killed in World War II. Now. Is that a coincidence? I mean, you could say that it probably could be, but you know, I mean, in dealing with the scripture, there's really not a lot of what I would call coincidences. There's things that Yahuwah puts, little gems, if you will, that he puts in the scripture to help us see the way that the way things truly are, if you have eyes to see. Now, if you don't have the eyes to see, you will never see it. In other words, if you're stuck in, a, in the English version and you think, well, you know, I'm just going to stay in the English version because, you know, that Hebrew, all that stuff was done away with. Well, we know that it wasn't done away with. And if you don't, if you don't get into the Hebrew, if you don't try to understand it a little bit, then you'll never, you, I mean, it's, it's impossible to understand the English version because, or the true meaning, reading it from the English version, because the English version doesn't carry the depth or the meaning of what the Hebrew means. And so I'm going to encourage you to, you know, it's, it's go, to, you know, go to the interlinear. When you see words that you know would be key phrases or key words, go into the interlinear and look at what the word actually means and do your study. You may not bring up anything, but then again, you might. And those little gems will help build on your understanding, your, your wisdom, if you will, of the Hebrew scripture. And not only the Hebrew scripture, but if you, if you read the Hebrew scripture the way it's intended, and then read the, the New Testament <coughs> the way that it should be read, they fit like a hand in a glove. They, they go together. They, they're not in conflict with each other, not even a little bit. In fact, the New Testament is basically a concise, it's kind of like cliff notes of the Old Testament, along with the historical accounts of the of Yahusha and the disciples. So, if, so looking at it like that, there's nothing in the New Testament that violates the Torah or the, any, any, any of the Old Testament, any of the Tanakh. In fact, it completely supports the Old Testament. It completely supports the Torah. There's, there's nothing that's in direct conflict if you're reading it right. Now, I know a lot of people I was taught, I was taught that there's, there's conflicts, that the, the God of the Old Testament is not the same God of the New Testament, basically. It's that the God, the God of the Old Testament retired and put his son in charge. Well, that's, I mean, you can look at it however you want. You can, you can have a, an understanding however you want to look at it. But Yahusha is Yahuwah in the flesh. The, his flesh was Yahusha. His spirit was Yahuwah. And the Yahuwah, the creator. And so, you know, just 
understanding that there is no conflicts and understanding that the Hebrew carries much deeper meaning than what the English can convey. Okay, so that's the end of the study tonight. And I want to thank you all for watching. If you have questions, put them in the comments and I'll try to get back with you and answer. And, and uh, I guess until we see you again, we'll, I guess, hope to see you next on the next video. Shalom.